Today we're going to be talking about the boy band that had a fair amount of prosperity in their prime, but is one of the most overlooked boy bands of their time, even though they had a TV show and music to match or surpass their peers in quality. Big Time Rush Big Time Rush was a made-for-TV band that eventually overtook success in real life, which is a very common and smart business practice, which is sometimes referred to as the Hannah Montana business model. Disney Channel was especially notorious for using this model, typically having a show or movie based on kids with some type of singing or talent or markability, and they would mold those talents or looks into music as merchandise for that movie or show, which would translate to success in real life, not just the show. The most notable figure for this was Hannah Montana, who sold millions of albums and simultaneously became a household name. The character itself is bigger than some real life pop stars and has also surpassed them in numbers. It goes without saying Hannah Montana was also the catalyst for Miley Cyrus's ultra successful music career. And you'd also notice this same business model being used in countless shows and movies like Lemonade Mouth, High School Musical, Ant Farm, The Cheetah Girls, and so on. Even though Nickelodeon would start to use this model as excessively as Disney did a little later, Big Time Rush was one of their first big made-for-TV acts that achieved notable success in real life. The band was formed in 2009 to create the hit show of the same name. The show focused on four teens from Minnesota named Kendall, James, Logan, and Carlos, who played hockey and formed a boy band led by a producer. It would follow their everyday life as being a pop band and the struggles and hardships they went through, but also highlighted their friendship and bond. Nickelodeon made a deal with Columbia Records to construct original music for the show. Eventually, the show was released to the little screen and proved to be a hit, receiving millions of viewers and broke several viewing records for the Nickelodeon network. They quickly released their debut single, which also served as the theme song for their show's self-titled Big Time Rush. The song didn't do much, but it's fair to assume it was more of a promotional effort to build familiarity. Now the good thing about acts such as Big Time Rush is that they didn't have to do as much promotion as a traditional artist since their TV show, which raked in millions of viewers, served as a promo. Their debut album was eventually released, still keeping on par with their brand, it was simply titled BTR. It landed in the top 3 of the Billboard Hot 200 and sold over 60,000 copies in its first week. With the continued success of the show and promotional tours, it would eventually go on to sell over 500,000 copies was generally well received for its tween friendly sound. They would frequently guest celebrities or other well known figures on the show and incorporate them into an episode to essentially sell the song that they worked on. With this album, there was a lot of promotion involved, and there were songs specifically made for the show that weren't officially released as a single, like their very popular collaboration with Jordan Sparks called Count on You. And then there were songs like Halfway There, which was their first Billboard entry but still wasn't officially released as a single. Some other notable songs on this album were Boyfriend with Snoop Dogg and the song that made everyone cry, Worldwide, which was featured on a widely popular episode, Big Time Breakup, in which one of the members has to break up with their girlfriend. Nickelodeon was really set on making them stars, they even released a Christmas EP, and their careers just kept on elevating. The show was renewed for another season and they began working on their second album, cleverly titled Elevate, because they seemed to be growing bigger and bigger. Elevate matured their image to the point where they weren't too distant for their target audience, but weren't too overly tween friendly. There's only so much you can do being on a kid's network, however this was a natural progression and step in the right direction. The album proceeded with the first single Music Sounds Better With You, which is my personal favorite song by them and was a moderate radio hit. The album itself debuted on the charts selling over 70,000 copies, which was a step up from their debut album. Their most notable song from this album is Windows Down, an insanely catchy summer jam that earned them their last Billboard entry thus far. They eventually went on to tour for this album and JoJo and One Direction opened up for them on their tour, which is a bit insane considering how massive One Direction would go on to be. But it was a great marketing strategy to increase the hype around both bands. According to J14, Kendall revealed that it sucked to have 1D open for them. Let's put it this way, he says, when One Direction were opening for us, their support was blossoming. As cool as it was to hang out with them, it sucked for us because there would be 2,000 girls outside the show singing their songs, even though we were headlining. The only reason we were on tour with them is because we had the same record label, and they were using us to promote the band in America. We didn't think that was fair, but it happened, and the rest is history. Not too far after their second era was about to be wrapped and the singles were doing well, the first full-length movie, Big Time Movie, was announced and released shortly after. 
The movie was a big success, amassing over 10 million viewers, and was accompanied with a soundtrack. Nickelodeon renewed their show for yet another season, and this would be their last. While the show was still running, they released their final album thus far titled 24-7. The band members played an integral role in this album, co-writing a majority of the tracks, and it seems like they were making steps to be taken seriously as an artist. This album also saw them step their maturity up a notch, and was a pop record with some rock and R&B influence. However, it marked a decline for the group and was their lowest selling album yet. After the show ended, they all decided they wanted to go in different directions and pursue their own careers. Kendall would go on to release music with his duo, Heffron Drive. James would be on Dancing with the Stars and Big Brother. Carlos would also compete on Dancing with the Stars and become a dad, and Logan would release music independently. And recently, the band reunited to get some encouraging words to fans during this time, basically saying spread love and reach out to your friends and family. And who knows, seeing that they reunited, maybe they'll head to the studio together one day, but they didn't mention reuniting officially as a band, so don't get your hopes too high. Personally, I think BTR did deliver some solid tunes, but being so manufactured and made for TV, it was hard to see them outside of that. They were so tied into their TV show and Nickelodeon, while living in a world when it comes to boy bands during that time was owned by One Direction. They never exactly came off 100% sincere. You couldn't tell if they were a joke just for TV or an actual band. And maybe it was out of their control, but the fact that they never branched out away from Nickelodeon or their show could very much be the reason why they weren't as popular as some of their peers. 